People flock from all over the world to hear Warren Buffett's investment wisdom. It's why they call him the Oracle of Omaha. After five decades of success, his investment vehicle, Berkshire Hathaway, is one of the largest companies on the planet. For many years, Berkshire was most famous for its collection of stock market investments, shares in the likes of Coca-Cola and American Express. But it's been buying whole businesses, too, since the very beginning. After all, why buy a minority shareholding if you could afford the whole company? As Buffett says, quoting Mae West, too much of a good thing is wonderful. The Oracle of Omaha deserves a second nickname, the Conglomerate King. Berkshire was actually an historic name in textile manufacturing when Buffett took control in 1965, but he didn't plan to reinvest its profits in a declining industry. The money went instead into the stock market and into a 50-year acquisition spree that's accelerated in recent years. There have been insurers, chocolate makers, newspapers, retailers, private jets, manufacturers, other conglomerates, giant power companies recently, and North America's major railway, BNSF, to top it off. Beyond his investing prowess, there are a couple of extra secrets to Berkshire's success. The power of the float and the power of compound returns. There's a reason Berkshire's first acquisitions were insurance companies. Insurance premiums are effectively a free loan. You don't have to pay any interest, just make sure you don't pay out too much in claims. These premiums are known as the float, and they act like leverage for an investment portfolio. So for five decades, Buffett has been investing the world's cheapest money. Even today, insurance is at the heart of Berkshire. It's one of the biggest global reinsurers. It's expanding in commercial insurance, and it owns Geico, whose cute mascot has the most famous English accent in US TV commercials. This is where Buffett has got, after 50 years, investing the profits from all Berkshire's businesses, plus that extra money from the insurance float. By compounding returns, you only have to beat the market a little bit most years to make a huge difference over time. Beat the market a lot for 50 years, and you too might become the conglomerate king. But can Berkshire possibly keep growing now it's gotten so big? And does such an eclectic collection of businesses belong under one roof? Will present or future shareholders turn against its size and its unusual structure? And what will happen as Buffett's heirs loosen their grip? These are the central questions as Buffett celebrates his golden anniversary. Does the conglomerate outlive the conglomerate king? <laughs>